It is commonly known that about 70% of the Korean peninsula consists of forests. But now we are about to visit a special place full of the harmony of forests, nature, and humans. Here we are in Korean Minjok Leadership Academy. Korean Minjok Leadership Academy is one of the most prominent high schools in the Republic of Korea with a size over 1,254,000 square meters, including a big forest covering the campus. With the harmony of traditional Korean buildings and modern styled buildings, KMLA stands inside beautiful mother nature. But how much do you really know about KMLA? A school with smart students wearing hanbok? A school in Gangwon where 450 students live and study? Then how much do you know about the beautiful nature of KMLA? Cast around the English building, that will be mostly all. But this school has so much more. This is the real nature of KMLA. Now, it is time to take a deep step inside the ecosystem of KMLA. From flowers, fungus, trees and cats, to water deer and wild boars, the ecosystem of Korean Minjok Leadership Academy is based on the coexistence of human and nature. The most commonly seen frog species, Bombina orientalis, lives around the campus in any place where there is water, including the main pond, the pond in the Minjok building, and even in drains. This frog, Rana Anwai, is famous for its brown body and white belly. It came down to the basement of the gymnasium because frogs like going as down as possible to find moisture. Rather than Bombina orientalis and Rana Anwai, various species of frogs live in KMLA. The best time of the year to see fungi is when summer goes and fall comes. Fall in KMLA gives beautiful color to trees. Some red and yellow visit KMLA. Cats are livelier in fall. Not only can we see them near the campus, but we can also see them in the forest. Here is the main pond between the gymnasium and Tangiguan, the old dormitory building, where numerous species pass by and get a sip of water. As a part of the ecosystem, cats come visit the forest, hunt, and even get hunted. The Martis flavigula, Tambi in Korean, hunted a cat. The Nectaritis persianae, Snoguri, came and is scenting the carcass. The Martis flavigula comes back and wallows around the carcass to leave its scent to the carcass and takes it to somewhere safe, making it its very own. Nectaritis persianae, Snoguri in Korean, lives all around the campus but usually appears around the main pond. They mainly take a rest in the daytime and start moving at nighttime. On the other hand, Hyderpot's inner mist, Kurani in Korean, moves around day and night. One of their favorite places is the main pond where they can drink and bathe. The Hyderpot's inner mist usually feeds on dry grass and reed, moving as individuals or groups of two to four. This creature, Caprilus pigargus, also called as Doru in Korea, looks very similar to Hyderpot's inner mist. The way to figure out whether an animal is a Hyderpot's inner mist or a Caprilus pigargus is first to check whether it has a horn or not. Both male and female species of Hyderpot's inner mist do not have horns, while the male Caprilus pigargus has a horn. But the easiest way of figuring out is to check the bottom of the animal. The Caprilus pigargus has white hair on its bottom, while the Hyderpot's inner mist doesn't. 
This Capriolus pregargus has brownish hair at fall. Fall goes with leaves all falling down. Instead, white snow lays down the campus. Winter is a good time period for nature observation. This is because footsteps and traces of animals are easily seen when snow comes. This footstep has high possibility that it is from a suscrofa. What is this animal? This is an ear of a capitalist pigargus. Winter made the capitalist pigargus more familiar with the camera. The horn and its white bottom shows that it is a male capitalist pigargus. There is a youngster and a male capitalist pigargus passing by. The youngster is just about to grow his horns. The interesting part is that a grown-up male capitalist pigargus don't usually place themselves near youngsters, but the video shows the two next to each other. Unlike at fall, the fur of the capitalist pigargus becomes more grayish. During winter, one special guest visited KMLA. An otter, which is famous for living next to the riverside, came up to the mountain. It seems that the otter tried to find water and went all the way up to the mountain. Hydropos intermis is still active during winter. It likes to come to the main pond to drink water during winter because the main pond is the only running water on campus, which makes the pond not freeze easily. Nectaritus prosinides also visit the main pond for the same reason. They play around energetically, even in winter. It is not only Nectaritus prosinides that run around. Young Sascrofa, also called Bethesi in Korean, which usually appear in winter, run around the forest. Sascrofa can grow up as big as a human, but the youngsters that were born this year are not as big. As it became colder and colder, two endangered species, Parnellaris bengalensis, Sagan Korean, and Martins flavicula, Tambi, visited the forest. It is very rare for endangered species to appear in KMLA. This beautiful homeland of various creatures cannot be protected without the interest of many people. KMLA is more than a school, it is a home of nature and humans coexisting. A home of Mother Nature, it is now time to preserve and love KMLA. Once increased, wishes and love of our ecosystem will fly high to the sky, leading our home to be safe and beloved.